The conservative Christians I know are the most terrified group of chicken little motherfuckers I've ever encountered. Bill O'Reilly tells them the atheists are coming for Christmas and they post armed guards by the nativity scene on their lawn. Their politicians utter the word socialism and they suddenly hide under their bed from their own access to fucking health care. Their preacher tells them a goat monster is going to torture the ghost that operates their brain levers and they give them 10% of their income in perpetuity to make it stop. For years, I've had to be the skeptical voice of reason, as I'm sure many of you have had to be, reassuring my religious relatives and friends that no, that doesn't cause autism. Laws count regardless of how you capitalize your name, and Facebook will not take ownership of all your photos at fucking midnight. You know, I'm always the person saying it's not as big a deal as you think. And I've been correct with a 100% track record on this kind of shit, so I'd love to think that that would earn me some credit, right? Like, if I'm the guy who's known for always calming you down when you're freaked out about something that turns out to be nothing, and now I'm saying, no, 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 this is one of those times where you should totally freak the fuck out, you'd love to think that that would make it extra impactful. If this pandemic has proven anything to me, it is that that is not the case. The most paranoid people I know are all but universally ignoring this very real crisis. The same people that were terrified of Ebola when the nearest case was 5,000 miles away. Right? The people who are always sure they're dying of whatever obscure disease they featured on 60 Minutes last week. The people who are legitimately convinced that a satanic cult of pedophile cannibals secretly runs the goddamn world. You know, the, 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 these people, with more practice being terrified than anybody else I know, they cannot be bothered to give the barest hint of a shit about a legitimate crisis that's already killed more Americans than World War I, the Vietnam War, and trans people using public restrooms combined. And, and, and I sit huddled in my fucking house, having left my yard twice in the last 186 days, desperately pleading with my in-laws to, you know, maybe opt out of the bowling leagues and turkey shoots this year. I, I can't help but marvel at the role reversal. Their brains are so primed to be terrified of every little thing, and yet here they are in the presence of a circumstance that legitimately merits their fear, and they are fearless to the point of stupidity. Why? Now, it's tempting to explain this away by pointing out the lifelong existential dread their religion forces upon them, right? Like, demons are battling for their souls 24-7. They could wind up in hell, right? I mean, you know, even if they're good, almost everybody they love is probably headed in there. You know, the Great Tribulation is perpetually right around the corner. You stack all of that shit on top of the political angst that conservatives are expected to shoulder, right? The caravan of rapist immigrants, the impending rise of Sharia law, unfettered gay access to wedding cakes. And suddenly you've got to imagine like world threatening events just become a background hum, right? But obviously that can't be the explanation because they have no trouble whipping themselves into a frenzy over imaginary shit even now, right? Like even if you believe that they'd all simultaneously hit their threshold for fear, they'd have dissuaded you from believing that as soon as Fox News needed them to be terrified of Black Lives Matter protests. They can still fear. They do still fear. And some of the shit they fear is even real. But they don't fear this. Why? Well, I'll tell you what. One rule of thumb that I find always comes in handy when you're perplexed by Christian behavior is to ask yourself, could there be a sinister explanation for this? And it turns out that in this instance, there is. See, it's not like Christians just all spontaneously decided to ignore this threat. They were told to ignore it. They were ordered to ignore it by the people on high who speak for the author of the universe. Ignoring this threat was handed to them as a test of their faith. And as long as you don't impart any humanity or compassion onto the Christian leaders pushing this, like, damn the virus full speed ahead attitude, it's easy to explain why. Their whole thing rests on their monopoly over your fears, right? You're supposed to fear hell. You're supposed to fear Satan. You're supposed to fear the secular world beyond the protective walls of this church. You're supposed to fear eternal damnation and sin and the end times and the war against Christmas. You're supposed to fear the things that your church made the fuck up, right? Because imaginary shit is the only kind of shit it can protect you from. If you wake up fearing for your children's souls, your preacher can do something about that. Or at the very least, they can, like, you know, they can do as much about it as anybody else because souls don't exist. But if you're afraid for their health, the preacher is useless. Now, it, being useless obviously isn't enough to dissuade a preacher all by itself, right? But the pandemic is especially problematic because it isn't hopeless. You know, somebody will save us from this threat. But the savior in this instance, 
you know, as in all the other verifiable, measurable instances, will be religion's arch nemesis science. Yeah, I mean, religion, I'm sure, will still take credit for it. Eventually, they'll thank God for the vaccine without a hint of irony. But they'll know they were bested, and they'll know that we'll know they were bested. So what do you do, right, when you know you can't win the contest? You pretend it doesn't really matter. You downplay the stakes from the beginning. You make it clear to everybody around that you don't really care who wins this one. You're not even really trying very hard for this. And, and to make that stick in this instance, you have to start pretending the whole threat is overblown early on. Confident that science will save the day before it gets bad enough for your homicidal bullshit to have broad consequences. Right. So their instinctive dodge was to say, sure, a global pandemic that's killing thousands of people a day might seem bad. But when you compare that to the battle for your everlasting salvation, this is really just a scrimmage. Dying from covid sucks. Sure. But it's nothing compared to burning in hell hell for eternity. And as frustrating and indeed deadly as that dodge is, it's also an admission and it's an admission worth celebrating. Think about this. We're in a fight where our opponents feel the need to start making excuses in advance of the match. Something tells me that's a good sign. 